Hello, good morning everyone. This is Rishali. In my last lecture, we learn about introduction of microprocessor and microcontroller. Now, in this session, we will learn the next topic that is peak architecture with memory organization. So, this is a part one of this particular topic. So, let's see what exactly peak microcontroller. So, basically, microcontroller can be divided as per the some criteria like as per the bits, memory, instruction set and memory architecture. So microcontroller can be divided as per the bits. There are 4 bit, 8 bit, 16 bit and 32 bit microcontrollers are available. But in our syllabus, we learn PIC18 microcontroller. That is PIC18 microcontroller supports 8 bit system. Then memory. So microcontroller can be divided as per the embedded memory or external memory. So PIC18 4550 microcontroller supports embedded memory. Now instruction sets. So there are two types of instruction sets that is CISC complex instruction set computers and redu reduced instruction set computers. So PIC18F 4550 microcontroller supports reduced instruction set instruction. And there are two types of memory architecture that is Princeton and Howard architecture. So we will learn Howard architecture in this syllabus. Now there are some families of microcontrollers like 8051, Motorola, PIC, Texas, National, ARM and others. So we learn PIC microcontroller family in this uh, session because uh, this PIC 18F4550 microcontroller included in your syllabus. So let's see next. So about PIC, so basically PIC stands for Peripheral Interface Controller and this microcontroller was developed by Microchip Technology. So as compared to 8085, 8086, as compared to this microcontroller, PIC microcontroller is very fast and easy to implement a different assembly language program or embedded C program. PIC microcontroller also consists different components like RAM, ROM, CPU, then uh, timers, counters, then analog to digital converter and digital to analog converters. Then PIC microcontroller also supports different protocols like SPI, UART. We will learn these protocols in detail in next some sessions. And this PIC microcontroller can be divided as per the different families that is low, mid and high end range family. Now see here in this diagram, there is a first family that is PIC 10, 12, 16 and 18, right? So this is the 8 bit microcontroller. Now another one is 16 bit microcontroller and last one is 32 bit microcontroller. So in this session, we will learn the PIC 18 microcontroller because this microcontroller included in your syllabus. So let's see. So uh, that is PIC 18 microcontroller. So we will learn PIC 18F4550 microcontroller. So this microcontroller is having 8 bit microcontroller or 8 bit processor. The program memory is 2 MB, data memory is 4 KB. So basically PIC 18 family supports 32 KB to 128 KB flash ROM. But PIC 18F4550 having 32 KB flash ROM memory. PIC 18F4550 microcontroller having 256 bytes of EEP ROM. Then PIC 18 family supports operating voltage 4.2 to 5.5 volt. But PIC 18F4550 microcontroller having 2.5 volt operating voltage. It has 40 to 44 pins in pin diagram, 35 smaller instruction sets. PIC 18 microcontroller having 4 timers, 18 interrupt sources and analog to digital converter is 10 bit. The maximum CPU speed is 40 megahertz of this PIC 18F4550 microcontroller and this microcontroller having 10 MIPS performance. MIPS means million instruction per second. So they can execute this 10 million instruction per second. So this is a capacity of this PIC 18 microcontroller. Then there are address bus and data bus. So PIC 18 microcontroller having 21 bit in program memory and 12 bit in data memory address bus and 16 bit in program memory data bus and 8 bit in data memory data bus. So these are the features of PIC 18 microcontroller. So let's see here. This is a PIC microcontroller with Howard architecture. This is the architecture diagram. See here in this block diagram, there is a 60 bit program memory 
and 8 bit data memory so this 16 bit program memory having address bus and data bus address bus carry address or location of particular data and data bus carry exact data or values so program memory has 21 bit address bus and 16 bit data bus similarly in data bit that data memory that is 8 bit and it has 12 bit address bus and 8 bit data bus so this is the memory organization of pic 18 microcontroller these things we will learn in this session and part 2 which included these are the remaining components of pic microcontroller that is alu arithmetic logical unit registers then uh, w registers bank select registers status instruction decoder program counter file select registers and control unit so this all things we will learn in part 2 so basically this is a architecture of pic microcontroller they perform read write operations and they also having some power supply that is vss vdd and clock supply also so we will learn this thing in detail in next some sessions so for exam point of view just remember this architecture diagram next so before move forward to the memory organization first we understand what is address bus data bus and control bus so the address bus address bus indicate the name to carry the address right so it is a group of conducting wires and which carry address only for example 1010h so this is the address of particular data so when you want to fetch those data so at that time address bus carry the address of that particular data right so this is the 8 bit microcontroller so they carry the 8 bit address of that particular data and address bus is un unidirectional means data can be flow only in one directional like uh, from processor to memory or processor to input output devices so they carry the data from only in one uh, direction so this is the address bus they carry the address now data bus so data bus is just opposite to address bus it is a group of conducting wires and they carry the data binary data like 1001 so this is a binary data they carry this binary data for execution and this data bus is bidirectional because here data can be flow in both directional means from processor to memory or memory to processor then processor to input output devices and input output devices to processor so they carry the data from both direction so that is data bus now the next one is control bus so basically control bus is group of conducting wires and they control the signals and they control the per attached peripheral devices for example users can perform read right this kind of operations in memory right so these are the control signals means control bus control memory read operation memory write operation as well as input output read and input output write suppose user want to fetch the data from memory so fetch this control signals are handled by this control bus so this is the address bus data bus and control bus now the next one is components of architecture so the main and first component of architecture is cpu that is central processing unit so we all are familiar with the cpu right so basically cpu having mainly three components that is alu arithmetic and logical operations memory means they can store the instructions and process the instruction through memory and control unit means they control all the peripheral devices which is attached to the cpu and pic microcontroller supports reduce instruction set architecture means everything every uh, every system or every components can be embedded into the single microchip or single chip right this is called as microcontroller so this is cpu this is the main component of architecture diagram now see here in this below diagram that is i9 i7 i5 these are the some processors are there and these are the some motherboard components so that will be located inside the cpu now the next one is memory organization now see here in this uh, right side diagram so there is a first one is pc pc means program counter now the stack memory after that program memory so basically this program memory having three parts program counter stack memory and program memory so see you can use assembly language program or you can use embedded c program in language for execution purpose so at that time you can load or you can burn this program into the microcontroller for the execution purpose right so this program can be stored into the program memory of microcontroller 
so the name suggests that program memory so program memory stored all the your dot asm file dot c file or regarding some library files of your program so that is program memory so pic 18 microcontroller having 16 bit of program memory and they use 21 bit address bus means to carry the address of particular program or to carry the location of particular program so the 2 to the power 21 bits means it has 2 MB memory capacity now the next one is program counter so program counter means see here suppose in your program there is one instruction add a1 and a2 right the next instruction is sub a1 and a2 okay so first they execute a first instruction that is addition instruction so at that time this instruction moved to program counter next subtraction instruction now this subtraction instruction can be moved to program counter so this is a program counter program counter execute commands that stored in program memory okay because we can store our program into the program memory so program counter execute one by one instructions of program and they can store every executed instruction into the program counter so they automatically incremented the next instruction during the current instruction execution so sequentially from first to last they can execute each and every instructions in the program and executed instructions stored into the program counter now the next one is a stack memory so basically see here there are total 31 levels of stack so stack memory generally used for to calling one function to another function for example see suppose there is a, you can declare one function display and you can define this function that is void display means you can call the particular function from the main function right <coughs> so this calling function purpose they use a stack memory right suppose you can uh, mention in your program return 0 right so this return function also mention in stack memory then there is some nested loops then a nested functions are there so this all things that is call return then return file this all things are stored into the stack memory right means because of that nested previous address is overwritten so this is a stack memory <coughs> now the next one is data memory so uh, see here in this right side diagram data memory can be divided into the two banks one is general purpose register and another one is special function register so banks means just consider that there is one hard disk okay and the size of hard disk is 1 TB or uh, just consider that the size of hard disk is 500 GB okay so you can use 100 GB for uh, one purpose 100 GB for another purpose and 100 GB for another things purpose right means you can divide those 500 GB memory into the some parts so this is called as banks okay so see here data memory having 12 bit address bus means 2 to the power 12 that is 4096 means 4 KB so the capacity of data memory is 4 KB and uh, see here the this RAM memory can be classified into the two banks so one is SFR and another one is GPR now see here in this diagram there are bank 0 to bank 14 okay means there are total 15 banks of general purpose register and each bank carry 256 bytes of memory bank 1 stored 256 bytes bank 2 stored 256 bytes in this way up to bank 15 means every bank stored 256 bytes of memory and the lower bank is reserved for special function register an upper bank is reserved for general purpose register I will explain in detail now see here the general purpose register what is mean by general purpose register so the name suggests that this register don't have any special function that can be used for general purpose means you can use a uh, temporary multiplication addition or subtraction uh, subtraction variables in your program for example c is equal to a plus b so you can use these uh, variables temporary variables in your program so for storing result temporary purpose we use general purpose register so cpu can easily access the data from this register and now the next one is special function register that is sfr so special function register means that can be these registers can be used for special purpose means see here there are uh, status register so status register means suppose you can access the data from bank 0 
next time you can access data from bank one so it provide a status to each and every bank means this is the status register now port register and trace register so in p18 microcontroller every port is work as a bidirectional means sometime port work as a input or another time port is work as a output port okay so for that purpose you need to switch the port either input or output so this all special types of data are stored into the special function register or uh, you can use different times of manufacturing or user cannot change this function okay means uh, while implementing a microcontroller or while build up microcontroller some informations are permanently stored so this permanent information are stored into the sfr user cannot change this information so this is special function register now the next component of architecture is data eep rom so eep rom means electrical erasable program read only memory so basically we know that rom memory means you can write the program only once and we cannot use again the microcontroller for multiple times you can write the program only one right but in eep rom suppose you can use addition program and execute this program through the microcontroller okay next time you want to execute subtraction so at that time this previous program is erasable means this previously program removed from microcontroller and after that you can execute the next program so th that is eep rom memory this this memory is not directly mapped with register file okay so that can be indirectly addressed to the special function register so the name suggests that electrically erasable program read only memory so these are the some memory organization of pic 18 microcontroller in my next video i will explain the part 2 of pic architecture diagram thank you keep watching